Hello, everyone. I'm Carol Laurie, the host of her Health and Spirit podcast, an upcoming summit. And today we're fortunate enough to have Dr. Terry Walls with us. Dr. Walls is a clinical professor of medicine at the University of Iowa, where she conducts clinical trials. She's also a patient with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, which confined her to a tilt-reclined wheelchair for four years. Dr. Walls restored her health using a diet and lifestyle program she designed specifically for her brain and now pedals her bike to work each day. She's the author of The Walls Protocol, How I Beat Progressive MS Using Paleo Principles and Functional Medicine, The Walls Protocol, A Radical New Way to Treat All Chronic Autoimmune Conditions Using Paleo Principles, and The Cookbook, The Walls Protocol, Cooking for Life, the revolutionary modern paleo plan to treat all chronic autoimmune conditions. Dr. Walls conducts clinical trials that test the effect of nutrition and lifestyle interventions to treat MS and other progressive health problems. She also teaches the public and medical community about the healing power of the paleo diet and therapeutic lifestyle changes that restore health and vitality to our citizens. She hosts a Walls Protocol Seminar every August where anyone can learn how to implement the protocol with ease and success. So welcome, Dr. Walls. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. So um, how do you feel the microbiome um, influences the risk of MS and other autoimmune issues? Uh, The uh, research is coming out uh, very clearly that... uh, an altered microbiome is, is probably the first step to a leaky gut. Uh, these molecules get into our bloodstream. Uh, and then in the genetically vulnerable person, develops excessive immune response. And you can get uh, cross-reactivity with a variety of your internal structures and set up, like in my case, MS and others. It might be lupus or RA or other uh, autoimmune conditions. But it begins with a leaky gut, and that leaky gut, began with an altered microbiome, fertilizing the wrong bacteria and yeast that set this, this uh, sequence up. Yeah, and, you know, I was working on some articles uh, and just saw this explosion of literature that's identifying how altered the gut microbiome is when you, what, in whatever autoimmune state that you want to look at, whether it's lupus, RA, psoriasis, um, asthma, eczema, uh, the microbiome is certainly a factor in all of these diseases. Such an important concept. And what do you think people can do to unalter or rehealth their gut microbiome? It's, it's really important well, to know about you know, this. What is so exciting is uh, your bacteria in your gut fertile, uh, divide every 20 minutes. So by changing what you eat, you fertilize either disease-promoting bacteria or health-promoting bacteria. And, and that's the beauty of my program is that we have so many uh, uh, vegetables in there. Uh, people have uh, higher fiber levels. Uh, and if they don't have uh, an adequate response to increasing the vegetable intake, then I have them increase uh, their resistant starch uh, through things like chia pudding, flaxseed puddings. And, uh, and you'll see uh, changes that, that occur uh, within a week. It, it happens very, very quickly. Just from eating chia seed and flaxseed pudding, that's amazing. It is very cool. And it's delicious, too, right? Yes, absolutely. It, 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 it is really delicious. So um, how does the microbiome influence mood and behavior? That's something I'd like to address. Well, some uh, very interesting studies that looked at uh, over time, uh, it's over 105 days, uh, they collected the uh, stool, looked at the microbiome, and then uh, mood questionnaires over this time period. And they see as the microbiome shifts, uh, scores for stress, anxiety, depression, joy change. Uh, So that's one longitudinal study. Another cross-sectional study, uh, actually there are several that have looked at uh, your uh, mood states, anxiety state, uh, depression, uh, joy, stress. And again, that correlates with what microbes are in the gut. Probably what's going on is these microbes, um, as part of their byproducts, manufacture small molecules in the gut that get into our bloodstream 
that get then into our uh, brain uh, in our basically neurotransmitters. Huh, so the men, these, so the neurotransmitters are directly manufactured in the gut and they come into the brain. Absolutely. Uh, that is uh, one of the working theories, absolutely. Uh, in the gut, uh, microbes will also uh, talk to the brain by uh, yeah, input from the vagus nerve, which goes up to the brain as well. That's great. So what other illnesses do you think this approach could help with or do, does so, help with? Yeah, in our uh, therapy lifestyle clinic that we ran for years at the VA, um, we took people with medical problems, neurologic problems, uh, and mental health problems. Um, so metabolically, uh, we saw obesity, uh, uh, fatty liver, uh, uh, heart failure uh, uh, do extremely well, losing weight without hunger, normalizing blood sugar uh, and uh, blood pressures. Uh, autoimmune conditions. A wide variety of autoimmune uh, symptoms uh, became relatively quiet. People were able to go off uh, the disease-modifying meds and do very well. Things like uh, RA, lupus, psoriatic uh, arthritis, um, myasthenia gravis, uh, MS, of course, um, fibromyalgia also did very well. Uh, then we had our neurologic problems, traumatic brain injury, Parkinson's, early cognitive uh, decline, uh, a, a wide variety of painful neuropathies, uh, again, did very, very well. Um, and so we, we worked closely with the primary care docs because as people would adopt the uh, program, uh, their blood sugar needs would normalize, their blood pressure would normalize, uh, and they'd be having to adjust their uh, meds. Uh, pain would decline, and they're often able to wean uh, and get off uh, their pain meds, including the narcotics. Um, so... People do extraordinarily well, um, particularly if we can do this as a group, um, but certainly as they adopted the protocol. Wide variety of diseases, they did well because we were making their, their physiology work uh, correctly, and, and life is a series of self-correcting chemical reactions. So they kept getting healthier and healthier, and the need for medication continued to decline. Um. So could you tell people about um, your new book and just let people know how they can find you? Sure. Um, well, one of the big things that I learned is that people need to uh, cook at home so they can afford eating all these vegetables. And it's right. helpful to teach them uh, that it's fun, it's easy, it doesn't ha- have to take a lot of time. Uh, and by showing them how to eliminate food waste, they can implement these concepts without increasing their food budget or often uh, even saving money as they do. Uh, so we had cooking classes. Uh, and then I also, to help the public, I wrote a cookbook, The Walls Protocol Cooking for Life, uh, to teach people how to do this stuff and how you can do it uh, uh, while on a budget, how you can do it while on a time budget, because I work all day, so I, uh, when I get home, I want to, be able to eat pretty quickly as well. Uh, so if, if people go to my website, terrywalls.com, we have links to the cookbook. Uh, when, you, when you get the cookbook uh, and you put in uh, your uh, receipt number, we have a whole bunch of free gifts that are wonderful tools to help you in this healing journey as well. Because so, we're really trying to help people uh, uh, succeed, and my goal is to create this epidemic of health. Well, I love that concept, the epidemic of health. And one of the things I always tell people in my practice when they say I can't afford this is um, – if you go to Starbucks every morning on your way to the office and you order a latte frappe grande thing, which is uh, $4.85 and then which is filled with sugar and chemicals that you shouldn't be eating anyway, and then you buy some kind of pastry, which is another $3.50 or four twenty-five, and has 475 calories and it's filled with gluten and sugar, you've spent, you know, almost between 12 and $15 before you even started your work day. And um, you've put chemicals and sugar and gluten and inflammatory foods into your body, and you wonder why you start to feel bad. So um, the concept of taking that money and empowering that money in a positive way through buying healthy uh, grass-fed meat and organic vegetables and taking charge of your food and cooking at home with your family is such a positive way to change over your health. Yeah, you know, I, I will um, make the observation that in my traumatic brain injury clinic, we had a lot of folks 
on disability with a very limited income. Uh, and so we acknowledge that. You know, you, you get the best quality food that you and your family can afford. Uh, as we talk about gardening, uh, we talk about foraging, hunting, uh, fishing. Uh, and say, so, you know, if all you can afford is canned food, that's fine. Uh, eat the canned vegetables, drink the juice, uh, get frozen vegetables, get things in season. And as money becomes easier, uh, get organic. You can use the Environmental Working Group uh, to prioritize uh, your purchases. Um, it, but we certainly had great – and I told them it will take longer if you can't eat organically because uh, mm-hmm. you'll have to process all those chemicals. But you, you still have to eat the vegetables, and you'll still improve your health by dumping the sugar and switching to vegetables. Uh, and what I typically saw, a very common pattern, is that you know at first people are eating their canned vegetables and then frozen vegetables, and then they're they're beginning uh, to figure out uh, the gardening thing or the uh, local farmers market, mm-hmm. uh, and then they begin to figure out how to start getting some organic vegetables, and then often you know even my folks in disability find ways to uh, get more organic food into their diet. Uh, so it's usually a process for them. Um, but I, I'm mindful of recognizing some people have, you know, have severe financial constraints, and rather than thinking, you know, if I can't eat organic, it's not worth trying at all. It's like, no, no, no. You, you just do the best you can, given your circumstances. Uh, I and uh, it, it's a journey. That, yeah. It is definitely a journey. And I, I, I think that that's really true. Don't let the fact that you can't afford organic keep you from starting somewhere, which is really what's important here. Yeah. So... Thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience. And um, it's been truly an honor to have you on our summit. Well, I thank you so very much. Uh, you know, I could not agree more. This is a big spiritual journey uh, for us to reawaken to the possibilities. So, and thank you for uh, the work that you were doing. Oh, thank you. So this is Carol Laurie signing off for now. Please stay tuned, everyone. There will be more interviews on a daily basis. I hope everyone has a really wonderful day, and thank you again, Dr. Walt. Thank you. Bye-bye now.